Lester Piggott, one of the greatest flat race jockeys ever, with an all-time record of 29 classic wins, has ridden his last race and his last winner in Britain. It came in the third race at Nottingham and it was his 4,349th winner in Britain. But in his very last ride, in the aptly named final handicap, he could finish only second. The crowd cheered its farewell as Piggott unsaddled and weighed in for the very last time. Piggott was his usual unemotional self. Lester Piggott first became champion jockey 25 years ago. Then, from 1964 to 1971, he held the title for eight years in succession. And in 1981, just as people began to ask when he'd retire, he was champion jockey twice more. Linda Berry looks back at the career of the man who's dominated the flat for more than a generation. Lester Piggott, at 49, the man they say has a face like a well-kept grave. Private and introverted, he's partially deaf and has a slight speech impediment. He started riding at four and won his first race at 12. Even he couldn't have dreamt up the success he was to have. But now, it's all over. Well, I think it's the right time, and uh, I'm going to be 50 in uh, a few days' time. You know. I think it's the right time to go. He won his first derby on Never Say Die in 1954, but shortly afterwards, he was banned for six months for reckless riding. Lester Piggott's career had begun as it continued, peppered with controversy. What a triumph, too, for 18-year-old Lester Piggott, surely one of the youngest jockeys ever to win the derby. Weight was always a problem. At five foot seven and a half, he was really the wrong build for a flat jockey and was continually battling over the years to keep two stones lighter. But because he's much bigger than most jockeys, he's here on the left, he has terrific strength and an immensely strong finish. He's a brilliant judge of pace and timing, and riding with his short stirrups has a pivotal balance that almost defies gravity. Yet he keeps the power channeled exactly, ensuring the 1,100 weight of aggression beneath him passes the post first. This is the genius of Piggott. He got this real determination, which is, is so strong that in the end, horse racing is always more about the mind than the matter. And his mind has been that strong, but because it's been that strong, it's been so tunnel vision, at times he hasn't even seen people. I mean, he walked straight past you, Lester, at times he'd be a pain in the neck at others, but uh, in the end, he's taken, he's taken more from racing than, than probably anyone has ever been. He's certainly got his cash. But the greatest thing about him is that he's given a bit too. He's a man who's really completely created a metamorphosis in the art of race riding. I mean, he's set entirely new standards. How has he managed to do that, though? A lot of things, uh, technical ability, but above all, determination, and indeed, uh, perhaps a degree of ruthlessness. I admire his courage enormously. He's, he, you could almost say that he doesn't know about being afraid, but then who knows? He may just have conquered it. He's had desperate falls by flat race standards. I mean, a couple of times he's been a flip inch away from being stone dead, not just hurt, dead. The, one of the reasons why he's upset people is he uses words about as freely as he does ten pound notes. He, 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 he says very, very little. And this sometimes upsets people. On the other hand, when he does smile at you and say something, you feel that you're a king, you know. Ooh, and Lester Piggott actually talked to me, so it cuts both ways. But he's, he's upset people simply because he'll do anything to ride winners. He doesn't mind if it's somebody else's ride. He, he, he is, in that respect, unscrupulous. And that characteristic comes into play with the derby. Truly, Lester's race on the testing Epsom course. But the mystery each year is always what's Lester going to ride. Then the ungentlemanly sport of jockeying off or replacing the book jockey comes into play. He jocked off Bill Williamson and won on Roberto in 1972. His partnership with Nijinsky was legendary. Together they won the Derby, the 2000 Guineas and the St Ledger, a feat no other horse or rider has matched since. But his career was almost cut short when his horse panicked in the stalls, dragging off half of Piggott's ear as it pushed to freedom. But despite 31 stitches and plastic surgery, the tenacious Piggott was back within the week to win the 1,000 guineas on fairy footsteps. Well the final 50 yards. It's fairy footsteps holding on from Toby. Fairy footsteps are 